Welcome back, Zero K fans, to another exhibition match. Now we're going to have Sacktoth and Google Frog fighting each other on Fields of Isis. So this is a map that I don't particularly like, but I thought I'd do it just because it's one of two games that they played, and I was kind of curious to see how they both played in these bo in these games. Like, if there was like a first to two or something, it'd be kind of nice to cast both. But yeah, this is Fields of Isis. It's very defensive. Usually these choke points just get all locked up. Both players have also taken their front choke points. This is basically the only sensible place to start. In a 1v1, I rarely see people start. You can start in the back, but doing so pretty much sacrifices one half. So generally, play players will start in the front here. The only time I've seen people start in the back is when they're going for some sort of cheese build, like Raven or Gunship. Otherwise, no, you don't see that. That doesn't happen. So anyway, that is... Other than that, it's going to be just basically running through the center, unless someone goes spider bots, in which case we're going to see a more interesting match. But if both players go vehicles or tanks, it's going to be kind of defense heavy. So let's begin. The so Sacktoth going for jump bots. Okay, this is going to be interesting. Trying to test out the new jump bot buffs while Google Frog going for the light vehicles, which is a bit more standard. This map, while not the flattest map, is still fairly flat. Apart from these choke points, it is fairly, or apart from the hills, I should say, it's fairly flat. And, anyway, Sackdoth going for the Quick Freakers, going for, I mean, they're, they want their economy. They're going to go back here, take out these Metal Extractors, take these Metal Extractors. That will be pretty much the same as what Google Frog is likely to do, I would think. Oh, okay, both players going for Reclaim as well. This is something I think is undervalued, the Reclaim on this map. Like, it's, yeah, it's not great, but early on, you might as well. But then once that's exhausted, they'll probably go for the metal extractors. They're safe. You might as well go for them. So jump bots. Map like this. I mean, obviously we're going to see the pyros. That always happens. I can't really see puppies. I mean, against light vehicles, I can't really see puppies being used. Pyros are probably going to be used for a little while before switching off to moderators. Most oh, the moderators are kind of risky due to the speed. Like jump bot versus light vehicle isn't a matchup I've seen played out very often. I'm trying to guess at what would happen. Because normally it is Pyro, Placeholder, and Moderator. Placeholders would be kind of nice if they hit. But against the slower units, the Moderator would probably be acceptable just because of the slow property of the Disruptor Beam. And only because of the slow property of the Disruptor Beam. Otherwise, the speed of the vehicles is going to just overwhelm them. And at this point, Sactoth quite a ways ahead in, well, in metal at least, thanks to all that reclaim. They're really keen on reclaiming everything. Google Frog reclaiming quite a lot as well. This is... I've never seen someone actually reclaim this map as much as they have, and I'm glad to see it, because frankly, people don't do it enough. But Google Frog is going to be coming in pretty quickly, just for a bit of harassment. Unfortunately, going to harass the commander, which is not harassment at all. In fact, that is a suicide mission. Not sure why they're continuing to do so. Okay. Save the Scorcher, at least. Please, save the Scorcher. But where... Well, Slashes from here? Google Frog loves to go over the Slashes, that makes sense. And actually, against the Pyros, that makes a lot of sense. Which is why I don't think Pyros are going to be used for very long. In fact, that kind of nullifies Moderators, too. I can kind of see Firewalkers coming in here. Jax would be able to punch through. Firewalkers would be able to deal the damage. Yeah, Jax would be able to punch through the Slashes, at least. But they're so expensive. I don't know. Between that and Firewalker, they just... This is going to be difficult for Sacktoth to get through, I think. Like, on this map, with this matchup, there's not really any advantageous spot for jump bots. Like, spiders, at least, they have the mountains to work from. Jump bots, I don't think, can even jump up there. They might be able to. It looks like there's a tiny little ridge at the very top. They might be able to jump to it. I'm not confident. Alright, so... Anyway, lots of stuff going on in the chat about really terrible ways of giving criticism. And this is... Okay, so Orphid is, is confident. They're pointing out in chat that Sackdoth did... Oh, sorry, no. Orphid is pointing out that they won a game on Red Comet with jump, jet, with jump bots. And Red Comet, I can see, working fine for jump bots. They have plenty of room to set up. They have plenty of room to set up either traps or to run in with pyros. And they have the craters they can jump in and out of. On this map, there's nowhere the jump of features of any use. The choke points, they're kind of handy, but that, 
that kind of defeats the purpose of the placeholder. I mean, not completely, but at least it makes it not as useful. And just the way the choke points are, your opponent can set up there. And if your units try to get through, there's slashers in the way. And the only way to deal with that is jacks, and jacks are really expensive. And then you can come in with scorchers and ravagers and levelers to deal with everything else. It's just... I don't... I think jump bot has a bit of a disadvantage here. Especially when they're trying to jump in like that, and the pyro just goes in and dies. Hey, these slashers are going to be doing extremely well here, tearing apart that choke point. Google Frog taking the north side. Trying to break the south side. This one slasher is probably going to survive. Should live. And at this point, Sactoth cannot really deal with the slashers. The static defense is not long range enough. So at this point, there's not much to go. Oh, what? Is this Scorcher? Is this Slasher going to die? No. 10 health. Just barely lives. I thought... I thought the Slasher would live. I would have been surprised if it hadn't. That had been weird. At this point, though, Google Frog is establishing a lot of dominance. They're 10 metal ahead. They have got a pretty solid defensive line. Well, the north is pretty solid. The south is becoming a problem. Saktoth setting up defenders to stop those Slashers from having complete free reign. But even then, this is... That's fine. It's, it's going to be harder for anything else to... Sorry, it's going to be easier for anything else to get through. It's going to be harder for Saktoth to defend the south side of the map at this point. Yeah, the biggest thing they have going for them is probably these rocks that block off the vehicle pathing. Hard to see, but yes, they do actually block the vehicle pathing. So that is going to be a bit of an issue. What's OP? Oh, the camouflage and the commander. Yes, that's a thing. The donation skin, or I guess when you're one of the main... Actually, yeah, I guess it's just donation skin. But yes, fancy tiger stripe pattern. Actually, it is kind of hard to see. If it weren't for the outlines and x-ray shader, it would be really hard to see on this map. But I do have outlines and x-ray shader on, so no worries. We have that completely sorted. Google Frog. Yeah, I don't even have to worry about this north side. The Firewalkers coming up. This is the moment of truth for the Firewalkers. As Google Frog goes for the gunship switch, just about finish up the factory... I don't see that being too much of a problem. Actually, wait, yes I do. There are no moderators in play. That actually is going to be a problem for Sactoth. <laughs> Sorry, if Sactoth had gone for a lot of moderators, then no, that wouldn't be a problem at all. Archangels would probably be an emergency thing they'd go for. And now the Slash is coming in to try to finish things off. But that Stinger, good placement of the Stinger there. And up comes the Firewalker, followed by Pyro Support. And there are the moderators. So we finally have moderators at some point. Which will be... Okay, never mind. We are getting Valkyries. We are getting a leveler drop, I think? We're getting a drop of some kind. Ravager drop, probably. Not a leveler drop. There's only one of the levelers. Or maybe both. Maybe a leveler Ravager drop. How many are they going to be building? It looks like it will be a grand total of 11. Sorry, of 10. Yeah, because there's two, there's two more after this. To 10 of these. Yep, level of Ravager drop. Where are they going to go with this? And the Firewalker taking out the north side, or he's damaging the north side. Going to be a bit of a problem, but can also be attacked directly thanks to these drops. Or flings, to be more precise. So, level of Ravager fling, getting rid of that Firewalker in no time at all. Unfortunately, the moderators are up, causing the levelers and Ravagers to be in a really tight spot right now. Actually, the Raptors aren't so bad. The Moderators only deal, yeah, 500 damage. So the Raptors can get through. Levelers, not so much. So at this point, Sactoth does have a nice, they have a nice grip in the south side. They're kind of losing the north side, and they don't have, they're not inside Google Frog's base. That's the thing. Google Frog, they have a nice, healthy area. They don't have this territory captured, but they can pretty easily defend it. And they're taking the north side over here. So they're putting Sactoth in a really uncomfortable position, while Sactoth, on the other hand, they have the back of their base considerably better developed. They have a much healthier energy infrastructure and therefore better overdrive. Which is basically the one thing keeping them from completely dying thanks to... Well, I should say that was keeping them from completely dying thanks to the lack of territory. But at this point we get another drop. Or fling, I'm not quite sure which. We'll find out in a moment. It is, in fact... A... Well... A drop. It is solidly a drop. As the Valkyries just stick around and die. Nice kill on the geothermal plant. That's exactly what needs to die. However, that was at the same time that a Moho geo plant was built in the other spot. So Google Frog took the well, okay, not a bad spot to take, but still 
I guess the Sackcloth decided, well, I've got the south side defended. They're not going to tackle on the south side. Let's make that the Moho. And make the regular Geo Plant at the north. Like, not bother upgrading the north one, because that's where Google Frog's going to attack. And if that was Sackcloth's thinking, they were absolutely right. So Google Frog at this point, now finally taking the south side, reclaiming, and probably building up. I haven't built up the north side, though. Being very slow and steady when it comes to trying to take that, and getting another drop down. If these take out the moderators, that will probably do it. As in, that will probably be game. Like, five moderators, and we do see puppies coming up. They want to use the reclaim. They'll probably want to reclaim this firewalker. We got puppies and moderators. Neither of which I'm really confident in. And there we go. Now taking out the correct choice. Google Fox saying, let's go to the south. Let's see what happens if I take out south. And you get a Moho Geo plant at the cost of five units because they're all going to die. As is a huge chunk of Sackdot's base. So that was actually probably worth it. There was no way out of that. That's for sure. Like that, that explosion would have been yeah, indeed bigger than you remember. Bigger than most of us remember. But yes, Moho Geo plants explode like a silencer missile. Or maybe slightly less, but pretty much like a silencer missile. So they deal a lot of damage when they explode. So they got a couple of metal extractors for free on top of killing Sakdos energy production. I mean, they dropped down to 75, and that was most of their overdrive, too. And the missile silo has been spotted out. I think Google Frog is probably well aware of it. Well, they're aware something is there, but they don't know what it is. And the first one, first missile up, going to be the Inferno. Of course it's going to be the Inferno. Has not been fired yet, though, but yes, the Inferno is, of course, the most popular missile. Everyone goes for Infernos first. Because they just deal with large groups of units. Unless you have a specific target to kill, there's not much point going for the Aos. And I have seen Shockley used well, at least against shield bots, but that's a bit more specialized. However, Inferno just kills a wide range of things, and there's that first shot! Where is it shooting to- oh, doesn't tell me. Well, it's shooting into the army. And missing, sadly. Hitting a couple slashers, and that's about it. At this stage of the game, that's not a big loss. Especially given that Google Frog is bearing down on Sackdot's north side. So that is going to be a big problem to deal with. And I think Sackdoth is not really... Okay, they're going to fire another Inferno over to the north. Most likely going to fire it over here to deal with this. And... Okay, is that going to be another Geoplant kill? Because that's the most likely guess of mine. These Blast Wings. I mean, kill the Geoplant. If everything's going to blow up anyway, you might as well have units that are designed to blow up. And this Stinger should be down fairly shortly. Good Inferno shot, though, but that actually hit the south. And now hitting the main base. There we go. That's the Inferno shot you're always looking for. When is it going to hit the opponent's main base? However, it didn't hit any of the Caretakers. Slowing down production in the Vehicle Factory, but the Caretakers, that's going to be a bigger deal. Google Frog is already accessing, actually. Google Frog actually needs to build more units. Mostly because they're spending a lot of Caretakers are repairing when they really don't need to. If they were to build up more units in the factory, that would... Yeah, Google Frog realizing this, pushing forward, realizing that the caretakers were not doing what they should be doing. At the same time, though, Jump Bot Factory... In the, okay, Jump Bot Factory's dead. Sackdoth is basically getting torn apart. And where are those Blast... Did I miss the Blast Wings? I missed the Blast Wings, didn't I? Let's focus on this. That's always the hard part about commenting 0K, is that everything's happening at once. That's also the hard part about playing 0K, is that everything is happening at once. You very often get these situations. But at this point, Google Frog is... Well, not going to be too adversely affected, I think. Like, the Infernos are coming in, but that's the Moho plant, and that's getting... Is that getting repaired? Is that not getting repaired? That could be a problem. Eventually. But it could be a problem, anyway. I mean, if this kind of comes down to how long it takes for the Stinger to die, which really comes down to the Wolverine's fire error... So it's kind of down to luck whether or not Google Frog's going to be able to get rid of the missile silo before their Moho Geo plant burns up. And they have nothing there to repair it, so this is going to be a problem. Right, the pylon's fully repaired, but even then, it's just they don't have a whole lot that's dealing with this. I'm not sure how much they care about that, though. Now they're adding Floki to their repertoire of factories right now. Sackdoth having gone for gunships on top of this. So Sackdoth does have a few, well, a couple rapiers. On top of missile silos. No real gunships from Google Frog. They haven't built any air units either. Not sure why they built that factory. But they had the Cloaky factory being built up. That'll probably be used to set up. What are they going to set up? They have glaives. Just a bunch of glaives. Okay. Use that to finish things off. Makes sense. And now the missile silo being attacked again. But I think this is going to be the nail in the... Is it going to be the nail in the coffin? We'll find out. And no, it's not. Going to go for... Oh, nice Aos shot. That was not Inferno at all. That was an Aos. And that is going to be the last shot that missile silo fires. 
Sackdoth not even bothering to try to build it up. Just realizing it's done. The Stinger's done. And now the Commander is very soon to be done. Sackdoth falling very far behind. This is what I mean. I really wasn't sure how Sackdoth was going to win in Jump Off versus Light Vehicle on Fields of Isis of all places. Well, digging is one option, I suppose. That's not the best option, but yes, one option. And that is, I think, going to be game. Glaive's coming in to finish up the gunship factory. Commander, not even being bothered with the Wolverines. Are, that's all you need. Just keep it down. That's all that matters, as long as the commander's out of position. And that could have avoided the burst. But even then, Saktoth is at a very weak economic position. There's no way out. This is game. Quite simply. Ah, cranes. That's why. Not sure what the advantage conferred by cranes is. I guess they can very quickly go down here and take this area. Once the razor's out of the way. But once that happens, that'll be... I mean, the game will have ended well before that happens. I'm not sure what Sackdoth is raiding for. They have nothing... They have no laces in their, in their sleeve. They've got rapiers. Powerful, yes, but that's about it. I mean, they do one-shot glaives, so that's good. But that is still going to be it, so this is... Why is Sackdoth not GG'd yet? I don't know, Sackdoth hasn't GG'd yet. And that... is not yet game. Once the Gunship Factory is down, Sackdoth is sure to GG. Which should be... like, now? There we go, okay, Gunship Factory down, and... not quite. Now it's down. Now Sackdoth will probably throw in the towel, even with these rapiers. There really isn't much hope. And Swift's just in case. Just in case the rapiers refuse to go away, in case Sackdoth refuses to surrender, the Swift's to take care of the rapiers, which is really Sackdoth's last hope. And I guess this commander, too. That isn't going to do much good. Yeah, this is... Even the Razor can't last, thanks to the... well... Well, thanks to the armor, it can last, I suppose. Ugh, come on. Surrender so we can move on to the next game. And yes, for those of you who might wonder, I realize there is a progress bar for the replays, but I don't want to have that on. I think it might spoil things. If the replay time is obvious. Like, the progression, I should say, of the replay is obvious. And now, with the rapiers dead, there is nothing Sackdoth has. Unless they're just being a jerk. And I'm going to assume they're just being a jerk, so I'm going to speed things up just to get this out of the way. Assuming that they're basically just digging their commander into a hole and hoping that it's going to cause everything to just go away and eventually they'll... Nope, there we go. Got rid of the commander. Went there. Okay, it wasn't even a GG. That was outright waiting until the entire game was over, until everything died. Well, the next game is going to be once again between two of these, but it's going to be on a much more sensible map for in reality, not like I said last time where it turned out to be Fields of Isis. Icy Shell. That is the next map, so Sackdoth and Google Frog once again, this time going to be on Icy Shell. Stay tuned for that, it'll be up in just a moment.